it's time for a reading from the book, Well of Rage, by Lynn Hess, on Skullface Records Radio. Chapter 1, March 1st, 2000. Considering the machinery he was about to put in motion, Billy Ray Kofer smiled as he drove his Dodge Ram through the last few blocks of Mobile's exclusive Spring Hill neighborhood and then crossed under I-65. It felt good to be headed out for the bay, not only to smell the salt in the air, but also to complete some long overdue business. The cab windows were down and the air seemed heavier as mansions and private schools ended near the underpass, giving way to shabby service stations and half empty strip malls. His father, Robert Kendall Kofer, called this section Kindlin Wood and swore many times when he was drunk to burn down and destroy every last living beneath the interstate and North Broad Street, but he didn't. The white landlord was one of his poker buddies. Daddy KC, as the family called him, wasn't a subtle man when he was alive. He was a card-carrying racist impartial to the torch, a rope, or a shotgun. But he was sly enough never to admit he'd been one of the investigators in the South's last known lynching. As their last hurrah, two Klan members had tortured and hanged Michael Donald on Herndon Avenue downtown in 1981. Then the KKK essentially went belly up after Donald's mother sued and won. You were one crude SOB, Daddy. The middle-aged racketeer shook his head at the thought of his father's exploits that helped to bury the Klan. Billy Ray liked to think of himself as a thinking man's racist. And he was glad the older generation was dead and gone or pulling portable oxygen tanks behind them while they're playing golf. The militia had replaced the Klan, and Billy Ray was proud to say that he spearheaded its metamorphosis in Alabama. He kept driving on Old Shell Road and saw some boarded up buildings as he neared downtown and crossed Herndon Avenue. It was a damn shame to see the city deteriorate, but that's what happens when low lives buy businesses and then run them in the ground. Stupid ass urban renewal projects. Only his people working in small groups could turn this place around. At least Cathedral Square still had its southern charm. He always thought of the park as a central hub of town because the Basilica of Immaculate Conception, the Tribune Newspaper Building, and Heroes, Sport, Heroes Bar and Grill surround the park along the abandoned movie theater and the peanut shop, still in operation after 60 years. Further down Dauphin Street, Billy Ray loved the smell of fresh roasted peanuts, especially when it wafted from the shop to the park. He waved to Marvin Stilwell, who was puttering through the park in his electric wheelchair. Marvin, a disabled Desert Storm veteran, lived in government-subsidized high-rise building adjacent to the park. Billy Ray held him, as he did all veterans, in high esteem. But the modern Section 8 building was an eyesore that stuck in his crawl. He was working on a new zoning code with the housing authority to eliminate the monstrosity. As he turned on Government Street, a man reading a, ma a map stepped off the curve. Billy Ray swerved and said, damn tourists. The downtown hotels and restaurants were full of liberal girly men, and the last thing Billy Ray and his compatriots needed were busybodies going through their museums and shaking their heads along with their hairy armpitted women than judging the Southern culture. Sure, they brought millions into the local economy during Mardi Gras, but afterwards, they needed to get the hell out of town. He laughed at what his friend Adam Hall called the disease of Yankeeology and wondered if any politician truly gave a rat's ass about America. Hell, even Ronald Reagan couldn't go back and save California from sliding down the proverbial shithole after decades of Democratic governors. Even the donkeys were left alone. There's no telling what this world would be like when his grandson Hudson grew up. Thank God for the militia, comprised of men who meant to reclaim control for the sake of their country, their families, and their race. This was a battle they could not afford to lose. Government Street ended as he passed through Bankhead Tunnel, an ugly yellow tiled monstrosity that reminded Billy Ray of a gymnasium shower, and came out onto Highway 98. He would see the gulf soon. Billy Ray wanted nothing better to do than to go fishing, let the boat float on the water, and let life settle. First, he needed to talk to Derek Gray. A mild breeze still lingered from the morning and played with the hair on Billy Ray's arms. So focused was he on an upcoming meeting that he lost the opportunity to appreciate the gulf running parallel to the highway. Damn ironic, he told himself, as he zeroed in on the land and wondered how the details of life made you miss its beauty 
and lulled you into believing you had time. After signing in at the guard shack, Billy Ray circled the parking lot and stopped in the front of the Korean World War Memorial. He watched people cross the Victory Bridge, a walkway designed to resemble the Namji Re Bridge, which spanned the Nam River, a site held for five years in September of 1950 by American forces. Most tourists walked through the World War Memorials without taking their hats off. Others allowed their children to play around the life-size sculptures of Vietnam soldiers and the granite wall inscribed with the names of men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice. Billy Ray's father had been in the Korean War, but he never spoke about it. After his father died, Billy Ray found a purple heart in a drawer. He had it mounted in a shadow box and liked to look at it while he had his morning coffee. It made him proud to be a Kofer. It was a constant reminder that duty and honor required dedication. He would not fail the militia or his dad. Putting the truck in reverse, he heard the radio give the bad news that the tied basketball team lost again to South Carolina's Gamecocks, nonetheless. Whip shooting guard Shay Cotton needed his black ears clipped. Best to be on a winning team, damn it, and that's what he was going to offer Derek Gray, the opportunity to be Mobile's next mayor, to be in the arena with the big white dogs. The way Billy Ray viewed things, the Holy Trinity didn't hold a candle to the serial power of sports, money, and sex. Money was a motivator. When rumors had indicated that Derek was strapped for cash, Billy Ray made one phone call and had Derek's second mortgage application at one of the banks. Everyone knew Billy Ray and his band of like-minded compatriots carried a lot of weight in Mobile, including Derek, but the school superintendent couldn't have an inkling he was the Brotherhood's hand-picked candidate. The Victory Bridge priority mission terms just needed to be clarified. Once inside the Battleship Cafe, Billy Ray patted his stomach and the gold letter N engraved on his ruby ring caught the light as if signaling the intention of his arrival. The letter stood for never let white power die. Spotting his quarry, he said, Hey, Derek, how the hell are you? Hello, Mr. Kofer. I haven't seen you in a while. Have a seat. Derek pointed to the chair. This must really be important because this place is certainly out of your way. Nah, just under 10 miles from town. Billy flicked a crumb off the table with his pinky. I heard you threw your hat in the mayor's ring. Derek nodded. Yes, I'm glad you... My, my, you're coming right on up in the world from the little boy I once knew. Billy Ray pushed up his Grandpa Rules baseball cap, exposing the pink crease left by the rim, and settled in his chair. Damn boy, didn't you used to wear braces and date Joe Morrison's daughter in high school? Or college? Billy Ray watched Derek split his role, choosing to ignore the mention of Sue Lynn who had been devastated when he broke their engagement and eventually married Rose. That was a long time ago, Derek said, holding Kofer's steady gaze and smiling. What you eating there, son? Looks mighty good. Gloria won't let me eat pork chops and gravy without bitching about my high blood pressure. Truly ruins a good meal. Indigestion sets in before I leave the table. Derek nodded his condolences. So, why are we here? I know it wasn't because you craved to dine on so, so tourist food. I use the bay as my getaway from the calls of parents and board members, but you have the Strikers Club or the Lodge. Billy Ray looked out the window and saw the docked USS Alabama and an A-12 Blackbird spy plane on display. Heaven for a man like him who collected big toys. The Mystic Societies are all right, he said, but I have more serious fish to fry. Derek buttered his roll. You want a cup of coffee or a cola? That's okay. I guess I need to get down to business. I want to ask you how your campaign's going. He watched Derek cut into the pork chop before continuing. You know the guys at Kalpas want you to win this election. We think your opponent's an idiot. Derek laughed, which caused a piece of pork to lodge in his throat. <coughs> <coughs> Billy Ray stood up and slapped him on the back, talking over Derek's coughing. We think you have a level head on your shoulders. Understand how to get things done. Derek wiped his mouth with his napkin and then replied. Thanks. I appreciate your confidence in me, but it will take more than your cronies at the billiard parlor. He looked at Billy Ray and smothered a belch with the back of his hand. Anyhow, I hope I can help the city grow in a positive direction. Billy Ray leaned forward. Which positive direction are we talking about, son? Southern point of view, of course. As Billy Ray sat, he said, There you go. It's no secret I'm not crazy about some folk. As my granddad used to say, an uppity n is only good for causing trouble. Get my drift? Yes, but please keep your voice down. Derek put down his fork. The days are gone. Even out here, somebody might be listening. Derek looked around. Only an Hispanic maintenance guy poked up a paper cup and dropped it in a plastic bag. Billy Ray shrugged and said, Hell, there ain't nobody can understand English within a five-mile radius but you and me. Derek finished his tea. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad you're here, Billy Ray. I could use your help. 
One corner of Kofer's mouth tilted, and a throaty chuckle lingered as he leaned back in his chair and interlaced his fingers over his stomach. Oh, so now I'm Billy Ray, changed the subject and got to your point all in one breath. Damn, you're good. How much you need? Derek leaned on his elbows. Honestly, I need enough to win without dipping into my son's college fund. Money will help, but I know I'll also need your clout with some majority party members. For instance, Gerald Compton has a bruised ego over the district's affirmative action hiring policy of teachers. I couldn't help that one. Federal regulations. Yep, I can understand that one. He kept nodding as if in deep contemplation before he added, You understand there's no turning back, right? Derek didn't hesitate. No problem. He said, I want this. Billy Ray twirled his pinky ring and tapped it on the table before he shook hands. Get your face out there some. Smile. We'll make it happen behind the scenes. Derek reviewed the conversation with Kofer as he rode home that evening. His married man barometer, not his conscience, told him that his wife wouldn't be pleased about Billy Ray, but Rose wouldn't need to know. After all, Derek had skirted a second mortgage and had partially bankrolled his campaign. It was a twofer, a win-win situation on the home front and for his political career. Derek relived the no-bullshit handshake before Billy Ray had left. It was a sealed deal. Both men knew the unspoken terms, securing the election meant the militia constituency and Billy Ray expected Derek's compliance with any of their future requests. The contract was non-negotiable, more bonded than any marriage until death do us part. Thank you for listening to Skullface Records Radio. This has been a reading from the book Well of Rage by Lynn Hess. Be sure to continue to tune in for more chapters to find out what lies beneath the Well of Rage on Skullface Records Radio. Show on Skullface Records Radio. We're live in the studio here, the Bull Nasty Show, man. Yeah. So, uh, so you have been going to Paris and eating a lot of dinner. Do you have a girlfriend, Bull? I do. You have a girlfriend right now? Yeah. Okay, man. I hope I don't curse you. Out of Paris? No. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. That's where I'm from. Hey. Hometown, baby. Hometown. Yeah. Uh huh. You're play- yeah. playing with the hometown crew, man. Yeah. Absolutely. That's pretty cool, man. And you're. Married. I am married. I'm fixing to be married. Yeah. My wife's actually here right now. <laughs> Dude behind me. <laughs> single looking for a pi- looking that. for a Pringle. Oh, single <laughs> and ready single and ready to mingle, aren't you, Slim? That's it. We were thinking about Bull, um, Justin, maybe you could help out on this man. We've been thinking about doing some kind of um show some kind of like, uh, like a, a dating re- show like a dating reality hey. show <laughs> set and slim up that's perfect. with a good lady because i think his heart's too big and and he comes around and and chicks will come around and and he'll he'll he sees the good in them all the time you know what i'm saying and sometimes they aren't they're not looking for the right shit yeah right you know right, what i'm saying right. so maybe this way slim can find a woman that's looking for the right shit that wants a fucking dude that's going to be there for her and throw him the he ain't called Slim for that. That's if you know him, if you, guys know, if you guys know Slim, man, dude, Slim's behind me. Slim, what are you three? Are you three thirty? Three sixty five. Three sixty fucking five. He ain't Slim. He's, He's all so, men. Yeah, and that that defensive lineman. Yeah, he's a fucking defensive <laughs> lineman, ladies. He will rock. I can't world. say it. I'm not allowed to say it on radio. Not even on Skullface Records Radio. I can't say what he'll do to that patati <laughs> when he gets the yeah. patati, 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 patati. Trying to keep it clean. We can't even say. As so, clean so, as we can. So you guys got to help me. I think. I think what we need to do is we need to find. Uh, singles maybe we'll get on like a singles app or a singles thing or something and we'll find these women we'll we'll pair them with slim and we'll see what happens if slim's down oh yeah hell yeah. yes hey, I'll, t- I'll tell you what since we're doing this if any of you ladies are interested in dating slim yeah call us in eight five nine five eight eight six four five six yeah if you if you want if you have an query about this or you have a friend or you have anything like that that you want um to get on this but like I, i'm thinking we all create a profile with slim on a dating app we're going to create different gotcha. profiles? No, 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 no. We're all going to work with Slim, as Slim, on a dating app. And then we're going to talk about the girls that we interact with on this dating oh, yeah. app. Okay. So I like it. I got a funny story about that. Okay. 
You so. were a female on a dating app. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> you so one. You played. I had a friend McCarty that Department. was not able. <laughs> he was having a rough time uh-huh. getting girls. So me and my wife decided we were each going to create separate apps for this guy Boom. Y'all, y'all so compete? The, I seen, we I, competed I seen on who you. was going to get more hits on this app okay <laughs> that's hilarious and she went in and she was talking about how sweet he was and everything like uh-huh. that and i swear to god it was the most grotesque uh-huh. demeaning thing i've ever typed in my life yeah. i mean <laughs> one of the things even said there's nothing better than you me and my parents cheering me on i am not fucking kidding you <laughs> way to go skippy i got more hits uh-huh. and messages from girls on that one for being nasty from being nasty you got for being sweet she got zero hits i got literally wow. girls sending me messages all the time and then i would send back to these hey, girls women like the bad boy you know? yeah i was also sending back to these girls like really disgusting stuff and they were like like all this they dick. were all about this all shit. this dick and you just want to scroll on past <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> like, and Lindsay was so like appalled by the fact that i'm, I'm drawn by it i'm drawn by it <laughs> I'm, I'm like her I'm, I'm the i'm a sweet guy like i play sweet until like uh you know, there's like a line or whatever, but I play yeah. sweet. Um, Until you bring out the handcuffs, the ball game. I rarely. I, you I, wear. I rarely, any, <laughs> I rarely anybody that I've dated, first time I see her, be like, let me suck them titties. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might think it, but I rarely yeah. have ever approached anybody with, really that with like any that success. Yeah, see, I've you're been, smart about like it, that. though. You think about it. You're like. Do I want to fuck this? Do I want yeah. to fuck this next week? Yeah. Do or, I want, you know, do I want this to be fucking me yeah. a month from now? And or like, do I just want to fuck this right now? There's been a time where it was like, hey, you know what? I don't care about you. And mm-hmm. hey, how, how dim titties feel in today? How, how dim titties feel in today? How, how dim titties feel in today? Yeah. <laughs> or you're going to yeah. write a song about it. Yeah. I still ain't sick of fucking you. Well, you back still then. ain't sick, sick of fucking, fucking you. Back then, we were more along the lines of not writing songs about it yet. Uh-huh. We were just telling them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, funny thing, we... Uh, We've been coming up with some new covers and stuff, man, and I learned Drift Away, one thing that we're going to be playing here, Ashes of Atlanta, live in the studio. But one was one that we fucked with last time, and uh, I mentioned it to them, and they were like, oh, let's fucking play it. What do you got? Um, Lips of an Angel. (laughs) You got to southern the shit out of Lips of an Angel. No, we're not going to southern it at all, but I I don't even know if we're going to do it, but I just played it. I was singing it this morning. It made made me think back about us fucking hanging out and fucking acting Every time I hear the song, I think about that. Yeah. Um, And we were sitting in the apartment. I never think about, like, some, I never think about what the song supposed to be about the song's about cheating on your girlfriend yeah, exactly. with so, so i never today. dwell on that i think about partying to it yeah to it, me we, it's a party song it's weird sitting in the apartment i remember who was actually there the first time we sang that her name was amanda blake her name's amanda black now uh she was there when we first i'm not even gonna say anything to that. <laughs> <laughs> and she was listening to it and i swear to god this girl was our biggest fan when we first started playing music. Absolutely. She'd come over when we play music. Did you mention your cousin that was with her? No. Yeah, your cousin would come over. What Wesley. Was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. Yeah. Um, but she was our biggest fan. We hadn't done anything yet, and she was a, she was a really good friend. Mm-hmm. And uh, They were she, really sweet about it. Yeah, and the she would even come over because the AC was out in the apartment. It's like 100 degrees. She would come yeah. sit in the apartment anyway and yeah. listen to us play music. I'd be sweating, dude. I'd be, be throwing sweat. We're awesome. throwing sweat. In a little apartment. Like we were throwing sweat. Awesome. It was hot as fuck. I got a story about that sometime. Throwing sweat? Yeah, throwing sweat. Not, <laughs> not suited, not, well, it's suitable for this, this yeah, station, but we're not going to yeah. talk about it right now. Man, uh, <laughs> man guys, uh, one thing we touch on here on the Bull Nasty uh, Morning Show is uh is health and um yeah. what we do with our individual routines and uh we try to hold ourselves accountable by what we tell and what we, we say do. here on the radio yeah. this uh this week's been a big change in my life i gotta get ready for a wedding on halloween yeah. and i've not been working out since halloween so it's like oh fuck <laughs> yeah. it's like i've been out for like six months and i gotta get rocking and rolling and i've got rocking and rolling the last two days what i've been doing is yoga i've been doing yoga as soon as i start out in the morning because i feel like if all my bodies are, if all my limbs are stretched and all my shit feels good early in the morning, the rest of my day is fucking easy peasy. And if I do it first thing in the morning, I'm done with my God. If I don't want to do anything else for the rest of the day, besides try to eat good, yeah. I'm done. Yeah, I noticed you said thirty in the morning. I noticed you said six months, but you only got three months now. I oh, know I got I got I, <laughs> I got th- no. I haven't worked out for six months. I have three months to get back. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. Yeah, what a fucking <laughs> realization it was. Yeah, this uphill battle now, man. You know yeah, that dude. I can't. 
I can't hang with you in yoga. No, I know you can't. You can't bend like I do. No. Yoga, baby. Most dudes my size can. Dude. And and, and, I, and I need to just I know your hip probably still don't feel the same does it I've I've heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> I think there's probably different reasons. Yeah, yeah. And re- most of those were female. I'm not gonna right, say yeah, I mean, go. I'm not gonna say them all. But <laughs> all the same reasons. <laughs> man, we're some nasty motherfuckers. Yeah. But um, uh, Aaron, man, um, so what, I heard you've been kind of slipping. Like I know you did good, great the week before, but I, I heard you've been you, kind of slipping a little bit this I past have, week. I right? have slipped. I, um, I'm a little disappointed myself actually about mm-hmm. it, but the reason is actually is uh, the last day I went to the gym, I hurt my left bicep actually. Oh yeah, you kind of overworked it, right? I did, I did. You uh, said there was some, uh, he said there was a little bit too much of eye action in there and he was trying to go too much. Oh, right. That's how trying, it works, man. He was trying it's to show like, him that extra rep that he can do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, uh, so I kind of backed off a little bit and, and if I can't lift when I go to the gym, mm-hmm. I don't want to walk in there and walk on a fucking treadmill. Yeah, yeah that's, you know? that's weird for a dude. Yeah. It is for me. Yeah. It's odd sometimes. Yeah, I'm just walking on a treadmill because I'm not going to run. Mm-hmm. I'm not running. Okay. No. Unless there's a cheeseburger. I'll walk fast. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, if you Unless see my big fat ass running, you better you you better, better start run. running the cops too. Are yeah. Somebody's yeah. coming. <laughs> the cops are coming. You ain't got <laughs> something's coming. Yeah. You ain't got to outrun the grizzly bear. You just got to outrun Slim. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> my famous last words are always going to be, "Yeah, I can outrun that bear." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I slipped. Um, and, and with that being said, too, I've drank a tremendous amount of beer this week for some reason. And that'll bloat you. Yeah. And, it'll uh, bloat you. Like we, more than we have been. You got to match it with water. Yeah. If you match with water, it's different. If you do match with water, man, yeah. that beer will fucking, you, you'll is, be pissing off. You need to put on a diaper. Yeah. You might as well just piss your pants and all just get along with it. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Drink a lot of water, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or put it depends on. Yeah. You know. They make them big. I mean, I did see <laughs> I some in the backseat of your car. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, Justin, what, have you been doing anything, man? Uh, working working out, out or anything? Uh, not as much. Not this uh, week. Not this week. Uh, me and my wife, we did go work out. She works out with me. She mm-hmm. does a very good job. She works out with me uh, sometimes, and we'll you guys go just in. Do cardio together, don't you? Uh, no, she actually giggity, giggity, will giggity. do oh, the workout. Giggity, giggity. <laughs> she does. She does the workouts. Uh, we do the cardio oh, right. afterwards when we're all hot and sweaty. So mm-hmm. we're already warmed up then. I feel you. But yeah. uh, in the gym, mm-hmm. because oh, we don't want to, we don't yeah, want to get kicked out for the other so, cardio. So you guys right. attend a gym together. That's we that's do. Nice. We do. We go to the Y. Oh, okay. and, yeah, uh, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, the one in Lebanon. It's the largest in the entire. It's amazing, right? It is. It's amazing. We need to all go there and visit. We go up there. We should do the Y. Yeah. She's walking why. there like we're famous. There's a yeah. There's like, another in your window right out. there. there. What's yeah. the in your window? You go, to the y, you, you go to the Y and then you eat at the Y. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then yes. sometimes you cut that Y into a V in your. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> we go in, and she'll do most of the workouts that I do. The only problem that we have is mm-hmm. we'll we'll do a lot of the workouts. And she's kind of like, okay, I don't know if I should do this workout. So she'll go off and she'll do something a little bit different and everything mm-hmm. like that. But Yeah, because you guys are different body shapes. Yeah, well, yeah, the accountability every, level that she brings when we go is much different than the accountability that I have for myself. You go a little bit harder? Uh, Yeah, yeah, definitely. When I'm in there, I will... I. So about a year ago, I was bench pressing about 245 and deadlifting yeah. 400 pounds. I'm the same pounds. way. When I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Especially yeah. for That's how size. I hurt myself, honestly. You look I wasn't really. Like, yeah. like, you look like, a, you know, you look like you have did nothing but thicken. I did. I did. Uh, so I got into this really big <laughs> workout routine. His, his wife is laughing. <laughs> and uh, I grew a little bit. Is this and funny? I, I grow a little. Yeah, well, you said thick, baby. I'm just looking at her. <laughs> <laughs> you said thick. She knows what thick means. Hey, baby, you want to come back and see my giggity at smoking? <laughs> oh, shit, guys. Uh, we have somebody that just came. Up. Wow. What? Only on the Bull Nasty show, guys. Who's here? Mickey fucking Mouse is at the fucking what? door. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there he is. Uh, buddy, he's got a key. Come on in, Mickey. Ooh. Boy, here I come. Hey. <laughs> Man, we're live on the Bull Nasty Show. We got Justin McCarty. We got Slim. We got me and Bull. Um, man, Mickey, we're talking about health, man. What do you do for health? Oh, I like to go home and get my wife the good old hot dog. <laughs> hey. Hey. Thanks, man. Oh, um, boy.
Welcome back to the Bull Nasty Show, folks. Oh, yeah, we're back. Oh, yeah, we're back. Back <laughs> at the Bull Nasty Show. We're now. here. <laughs> we're live, I think. We, fucking, uh, we, uh, we talk through some of these songs sometimes. Some of these songs are songs we've heard, you know, tons of times or whatever, and we'll get into conversation while it's rolling. Um, so Slim's reminding us that we are running the show, though, so yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, thanks, yeah. You're welcome. We get thanks for being a part of the show. We get into conversation and stuff here, man. Um, what were we talking about again, guys, before we, we went were to talking break? about a little bit of health. Yeah, the routine stuff. Mickey was here. Stuff. Yeah, Mickey uh, stopped by and fucked man, everything up, man. I can't believe it. Well, he came in and he got me stoned. He Mickey always comes does. in for one reason and one reason only. Dude, it's not to say hi. You know how he, he gets that to smoke shit. your weed. You do actually. realize yeah. how he gets that shit, right? <laughs> I found out. So I was talking to him outside, and I uh-huh. said, how the fuck are you getting all this good weed? He goes, hmm. I get it from Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's how he got his name, man. Oh, like, he you know, he serves it up, man. You know why Mickey divorced Minnie, don't you? What happened? Mm. Because she, she was, was fucking Goofy. That's oh. right. <laughs> So it knows he's slanging the weed, he's slanging the old dangalang in fucking Disneyland. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, so uh, Slim, back to you. Another question. If you're interested, I was thinking this as, a, as an idea. Because mm-hmm. me. Yeah, we talked about that. Huh? Me, Justin, and Aaron all are focused and trying to get focused on our health and trying yeah. to probably do better that way on a routine basis. Mm-hmm. Um, how would you feel about us doing a project and getting you involved? And getting you doing a little bit of everything that all of us do, man, and kind of document and uh, kind of do the whole, uh, you know, get you in shape type deal. I'm pretty sure once we go do frisbee golf, uh-huh. I'm going to be down for something like that. Yeah. Cause but you- as of right now, I'm pretty fat and happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't argue with that, man. You bring me a 12 inch sub gonna- and I'll go all in. <laughs> are you going to be a part of the uh, frisbee golf team? You no. are, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah. we have six people, man. So next Monday on the frisbee golf tip, man, we're going to be, you know, that's going to be cardio too. So that's yeah, right yeah. here on the health tip, man. That's probably going to be yeah. the best thing for us because we're going to have fun. It's going to be the fun of it you got to remember one thing though mm-hmm. is uh, a lot of people don't understand this is they get out there and they just start throwing these discs you do got to stretch man it's yeah. uh, it's very important i mean absolutely because you're, you're using you'll pull a something. lot of torque mm-hmm. when you throw these frisbees you'll be sore it, yeah it, it, it can hurt yeah, you, you pretty wanna, good uh, pull a hammy yeah you will man uh, i don't know if you're really using your hammies but <laughs> you know might throw a glute and a little ass muscle out. yeah so next monday <laughs> gluteus maximus i think gluteus maximus. i think we should keep stats we should keep all-time stats we'll keep exactly what we're doing we'll keep scores um, we'll document it. We'll talk about it. We'll have like a sports hour where we talk about the skull face record sports. Oh yeah. Um, we should probably add other sports. Like I like, uh, I like NASCAR. horseshoes, you know, no, I like, I let's go to Nick nasty yeah. with sports. Yeah. We should do a horseshoe pit out here or something like that. Beer man. pong. Make that a sport. Yeah, exactly. That is a sport, man. Like tonight we're doing beer pong. We could have literally skull face record sports where we do all kinds of different activities around this so facility. That makes us not only musicians. Mm-hmm. And we're on the radio, but we're fucking athletes. And we're athletes. Right. We're pro <laughs> athletes. Yeah, we should right. have baseball pro cards. Athletes. <laughs> baseball cards. We yeah. should have cards. You want to sponsor us, guys? Cars. We are taking Ooh. sponsorship for our teams. I've always uh, wanted teams. my own baseball card. Or, like, not my own baseball card, but my, my own horseshoe car. Yeah. This is Nick's horseshoe car when he got two ringers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nick this throwing is, a ringer over top rookie, of Justin McCarty. This is rookie horseshoe car. <laughs> he got a record seven leaners in his win. <laughs> Did you say wieners? Oh, did I say wieners or leaners? <laughs> leaners but you're, you're man, if I see a leaner, I'll think of a wiener, I guess, <laughs> maybe. Who knows, man? We'll laugh about it. Calm down. Now Calm down. He's getting married. And now let's go to Nick Nasty with sports. Yeah. <laughs> we got two leaners and a wiener cooking. We got, we got pulled pork on the left. We hey, got let's t-shirts talk about on the pork right. pork real quick. Yeah, mm. man. Uh, Bull, man, you have some big news with what's going on, man. Yeah, so we're open up Bull Nasty Barbecue. Yum. It's coming to you right outside of the... Skullface Records Radio Studio. Uh, so we got another building. It's not all together yet. Um, we've got the our federal EIN number. We're registered with the state of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Now I guess I have to go through the county and the city and all that crap. Yep, it's, it's a, a, it's a, a process. A lot of, a lot of loopholes. Yeah, it's a process. Keep going. Yeah. But uh, yep, they want your that little piece. Yeah. So uh, give me ten dollars so you. Can I'm halfway there then. So I've been um, through the federal, and the state already. Now I got to go through. What are you going to specialize in? And I know you're going to do your your main your your main thing is going to be meat. So what's going to be all about some yeah, women yeah, meat. love yeah. the meat. Absolutely. Yeah, man. They the will meat. come for it. Um, what, so what's going to be your specialty, man? Like your lunch to supper. Somebody wants to grab something. I think I'm, man. I'm always going to have do? pulled pork for sure. Mm-hmm. Pulled yeah. pork sandwiches. And make a pull, make a pulled chicken as well, possibly or something. Like oh that. yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm going to have a special day. Like, uh, Fridays will be ribs, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. maybe yeah. Wednesday brisket or something, or maybe Sunday yeah. brisket. Good idea. You know, good uh, idea. Cause I don't want to cook those all the time. 
No, are you they're gonna, expensive. Yeah, they are. Are you going to try to have any sides or anything? Like, are you going to boil potatoes or boil carrots or something like that? Like, have like a. Um, I'm not know, boiling any carrots, man. You don't like that? You don't no, like that shit? No. I like carrots. I got yeah, some. Uh, I got some. I think we're going to do really coleslaw. And then um, my girlfriend is all in it. She makes the best baked beans you ever had. You've probably had them, actually. Uh huh. So you think she'll be making some baked beans? Oh, yeah. She's down for it. She, she does already, she, does she, she make it she homemade or is she just grabbing it out of No, it's homemade. Everything's homemade. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be awesome, man. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Dude, I got some so, uh, mac and cheese. Yeah. Oh, like, hey, I want to do yeah, smoked like mac, mac and cheese, cheese actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Are there shit. special containers or whatever that you do that's like kind of set up to be able to put sides and cook inside of yes. a, a smoker? You can use deal? cast iron skillet. Oh, you can? Yeah. Cast iron skillet. You can throw it in there. Or you can also... Like, and throw uh, a lid I over I went to a party last... Not this weekend, the weekend before, and dude was smoking some mac and cheese. He did it in those little disposable tin foil yeah containers. oh that cheap shit yeah, yeah. stuff you get thanksgiving yeah. you yeah. do it all yeah. like it, it's easy to do your grilling is the same thing as using an oven you just got to think about how much longer it takes to actually cook the, right you just got to maintain the heat that's that's uh yeah. like this week i'm gonna start smoking stuff out here just to get used so, to this yeah. smoker that we just bought yeah and, and then he's gonna, gonna grill stuff yeah then we're gonna eat <laughs> yeah yeah he's gonna smoke and then he's gonna grill <laughs> I've been smoking out back for a long time before you came, brother. I know, oh, yeah. I know you were, man. <laughs> just you not. just got done smoking back there, didn't you? <laughs> I, seen, I went back there, man. Somebody was coughing their head off, man. It was crazy. It was, uh, it was, it was unreal, man. Yeah, you just we, ain't selling that shit. We won't talk about right. it, Yeah. That's a different story. <laughs> man, this ain't for sale. That's man, right. So, uh, man, we got so much fucking new shit going on here at Skullface Records Radio, dude. We got the, the Bull Nasty Barbecue going on. If I could on. add something to that real quick. Yeah, what's going on? It's all going to be carry out and delivery too so mm-hmm. uh uh dj slam he's gonna do delivery with us that'd be fun um and, and a lot of carry out We're, we talked about having maybe some picnic tables out there maybe mm-hmm. one or two yeah like, yeah. like a park but area. um i'm kind of hesitant just because of the covid thing yeah. going on they're about to shut shit down the, again, i think the so. picnic tables and stuff might not even be for others it might be for us yeah, you know, yeah, and and I want to fit. We're gonna fence off out there too. Yeah. We're gonna get it all fenced in so people yeah. can't like, just walk through the fence. Yeah, can't walk through it. Yeah, it's gonna look all like. <clears throat> uh, it's gonna look cool. What's that, uh, Mister Rogers' neighborhood over there? Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Now eat you some pork. <laughs> Pulled my pork. Meat my mouth. Eat my meat. I need you to put my meat in your mouth. Don't you eat my neighbor. We uh we got to refrain from the uh um being dirty with women because every time one comes over i can't be like you want my meat hey Aaron, <laughs> she wants your meat in his mouth and she wants slim's meat yeah. in the mouth bring me two so i she put it in her mouth she hey she, she wants some of that bull mouth. nasty there's a gang bang going on over here yeah the bull nasty <laughs> in would your you mouth. like uh when you look at the menu would you like the gang bang <laughs> would you like the uh single <laughs> layer yeah. we also have a uh, we also have part the of the We just call it misogynist style. corner. The misogynist corner. And if you're <laughs> right. technically rolling that way, it's we horrible. do have the vegan diet. Bull where nasty <laughs> where we're just all about our meats. <laughs> and for some reason, no women come over no more. Yeah. <laughs> Bull nasty barbecue. You can't beat yeah, our man. meat. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody, um, you know, over the, it's probably going to be a process over probably the next couple weeks is when we're going to get rolling on yeah, that everything. So. And we'll be updating everybody. Daily. Yeah, I'm trying not um, to rush it because I want it to be done right. We're so. American. No yeah. need to be rushing. Yeah. yeah. Um, man, we got McCarty in the house too, man. How um, about it? Know, man. You got this fucking, you gave us this format about a couple weeks ago, and it has fucking blew up. At oh, yeah. Fucking here, Skull Face Records Radio. Um, I know everybody's excited about the first, uh, hearing the first episode of you on Storytellers. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know everybody's uh, been. Had a had an awesome response to our interview that they've been hearing in the rotation on the radio. Yes. Myself, it made me just completely rethink the way that I was going to do a whole bunch of shows. Yes, um, yeah. So recently, um, it's it's basically a spinoff off of your show that hasn't even started yet. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting ready for the sequel. <laughs> but I've been doing, yeah, I've been doing hand nicked. Uh, Handpicked songs from the 50s and the 60s. Yeah. Right. And talking about fun. And even during our show today. Yeah. Playing, we've been playing, the playing them the, the whole time. We've been yeah, playing them the whole time. The and that was all because of it's, the it's storytellers. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, matter of fact, I'm going to throw it to one and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about storytellers here live in the studio. Magic under the sun. I love life's magic. 
work it, work it on out. We gotta work it, work it on out. Because we're all God's people, standing strong. We're all one people, getting along. We gotta work it, work it on out. We gotta work it, work it on out. Because we're all God's people, standing strong. We're all one people, getting along. I'm in love. I'm in love, I'm in love, how I love life's magic under the sun, how I love life's magic under the sun. Nasty show, man, and we got into where we were listening to music again, like we always do. We got into the backstage fucking thanks and talks, and oh yeah, do, man, we can't stop running our mouths. That's the reason we got radio show guys. I um, guess so, yeah. We're talking about uh, storytellers, Justin McCarty's new show. Yeah. We were talking about how shooting the shows isn't always coming in and getting it in. You know, yeah. so it's not always easy peasy lemon. That's squeezy. the easy part. That is the easy part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, getting past the stuff, like getting that format going, yeah. getting what you want to do, it's not as easy as I think a lot of people... No, no it's know. not. I think no. also there's some nerves involved in that as well. Absolutely. Like, I think, like we were talking about just before we came back on the air, yeah. you know, your nerves got to you a little bit. Yeah, when we, start, when we started doing the rehearsal for it, and we yeah. kind of tried to create a format, we, we did a, a whole walkthrough. We did an hour walkthrough. Uh-huh. Uh, it was about 28 minutes, I believe, of me talking about it. And yeah. one thing that we learned was that the show is going to work better mm-hmm. if I'm actually talking to a person. Yeah. You gotta, Whereas you me just telling you guys what of. it is on the radio yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, sounds like you're giving a documentary. It does. Right. And mm-hmm. you, you're reading from yeah. a p- page. Actually sitting there with somebody and looking at them as you're talking about this, you can, you're can you able to jump from topic to topic mm-hmm. and Easy. you're able to, you're communicating Bouncing with the off person. each other to make, keep that are. robot out. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Robot. it gets rid of that. Have a conversation. It's like we're talking outside. Yeah, exactly. Mundo. And the other thing that really intrigues me about this show right here is I wanted to talk about rock history because I know a lot about rock and roll but just doing a little bit of research on what I'm going to be doing I learned a lot more of stuff that mm-hmm. I really didn't realize yeah digging deep is the yeah. is the fucking deal dude that's yeah. what got me I was like man we need to go into the 50s and do yeah. four or five yeah. weeks of that so last you know, night for- Last yeah. night, I was doing yeah. a little bit of research, and we were uh, we were watching TV, but I was doing a little bit of research on, you know, kind of 1950 through 1952. Mm-hmm. And uh, I realized that I, if I take out 1952, 1950 to 1951, we're going to be able to cover quite a bit there. Boom. Um, not yeah. much happened. Yeah, and digging into that dude is going to dig out of some yeah. songs that people don't know. Yeah. Like, we're playing, I'm playing the stuff on, that I'm doing. Yeah. Those are the famous ones. Those are the ones you've heard on commercials. Right. Those are the ones you've heard right. on movies. Yes. We want to play the ones that are just as fucking good that nobody's yes. fucking heard yet. But they influenced other artists yeah, to, man. Be, to be who they are. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like, I love that. Like, that format is just fucking gold. When we thought about that, I was like, yeah, that's that's a show. That's something that's long-lasting. But you're going to learn a lot from this show. And mm-hmm. what you're going to actually learn is it's not about who was what and who was the best at what they did. What you're actually going to learn is that rock and roll wasn't just created. It was a movement. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody wants to always sit back and say, hey, you created this song. That's the first rock song. Or, hey, you coined the term rock and roll. But what we're 
looking for is what the movement caused. Yeah. Because yeah. it did we'll cause. Branch, we'll branch out where it to did. go. It caused that, a lot it, it of. It also uh, caused friction. Just like with COVID. Family. Just like Not COVID. Not just that. <laughs> It, it, it did cause a lot of friction, but what everybody doesn't understand is everybody talks about rock and roll. It's the devil's music, but brought it, a lot of people together too. It did yeah, bring right, it cultures did. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand because you hear rock and roll now mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, that's not my cup of tea. It's a mix of everything it's, though. It's just yeah. it's it such is. a mutt. But you it's get like back this dog, into the day. Fuck that other dog mm-hmm. all the way down the kind road. Like Ashes yeah. of Atlanta, for instance, we don't really have a genre. No. no. We're influenced by so many different yeah. artists. Yeah, so we're just mashed bands. together yeah. to make yeah. make a song. And you yeah. guys and the best thing about uh when I was listening to a little bit of what you guys do and um he's got a gun. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it's very southern at the beginning. Mm-hmm. You have an amazing southern voice. I, I, I don't mm-hmm. know how to say that any better. Thank you. Um, but when Without you get down into in the... his mouth, <laughs> <laughs> I could say it a little bit better, but they wouldn't. It doesn't translate on radio. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Yeah, My yeah, wife does it. have a camera, and that's, <laughs> that's damning evidence. <laughs> but anyway, so you have a great southern voice, and and what I found intriguing about it was. It rolls into uh, the course, which is more hip hop, more R and B, more. Yeah, up. So the, it's, it's, it's got a good rhythm. It's to got it. a rhythm yeah. to it, and so you're taking a southern you thing, and you're got off, you're, go. yeah, you're collaborating a lot of different things. I can, so say, I can say a rapper tried to uh, put a beat behind that and putting that in the club. Yeah, oh yeah, that no, on it's, loops. It, sure. it's really it's good. It, it is really good, and uh, I should do that myself. Yesterday, I was uh, kind of thinking actually. about it as I'm looking at this stuff. I was thinking about, it. I was like, I was like, I'm extremely excited for what Al- Ashes of Atlanta is going to do. Yeah. Uh, now cool. that they have a full band. Yeah. We we had an awesome fucking rehearsal Friday. Friday. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. we're so full excited. throttle. We're Super full excited throttle. about it. I the actually energy, wrote a song. Awesome. I wrote a song uh, yeah, that I think too, you right? guys, yeah, yeah oh, that really? would be great for yeah. you guys. We'll have to get that down and print. Yeah, I'm excited. Thanks, it man. Is, it we'll is. We'll get that printed out, man, because we're going to be practicing Thursday and then rehearsing again Friday. Yeah. So we'll be throwing some new stuff in the mix. If yeah, you ever definitely. want to come down, man, and just hang out. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm always down. I'm always down. And you can interview us on storytellers. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah, Ashes of Land Towers. on Storytellers. Uh-huh. How Anytime. did you guys? How did you guys get that song? Well, motherfucker, you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get that song? <laughs> uh, I take a lot of inspiration, uh, funny, and I tell you what, uh, Nick can also tell you this. I've been writing music since I was. Uh, yeah. I've been writing music since I was 11 years old. Okay? He's got a bunch of stuff, man. I've yeah, got. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm close to 200 written songs. I've mm-hmm. got a box, mm-hmm. a box of songs. Did you bring a poem today so you can do a moment of reason? Oh yeah. You don't have to do another no. moment of reason. I don't have moment it. Of oh, moment, moment of release. Moment of release. Moment of reason. Sorry. Moment of reason sounds better. I tell you what, though. I, I, like I can be honest with you. You give, me, <laughs> you give me another beer in about 30 minutes, and I'll give you a poem. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll I'm good it. at it, man. Maybe we all should do a poem. I got right. one my mom said. Can we all do a poem? Yeah. Yeah, you can do Let's your all, mom's. Hey, we'll take a moment. Later on today, we'll, and we'll have a release. release. And we'll have a release. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a circle release. <laughs> no, we're going <laughs> hey, to kick it to a song, guys. Um, Skull oh, Face oh, Records Radio. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go.
back with the Bull Nasty Show, man. It's been a long morning. It's been a fun morning having Justin in, having Slim. We've all been working so hard for the last few weeks, man, and it feels like sometimes when we get together and we get behind the mics, it's kind of, we're not just having to stress. Yeah. It's we're not having to worry it's about so nothing. Yeah. We're just sitting here and having a good time and having a conversation and having a few beers. It's good to uh, actually get out here and, and, you know, you just get to talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, yeah. There's no script. There's no nothing behind it. It's just us sitting here, and we're talking about the things that we – we do every day. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, what I, comes I really, natural. yeah, I really enjoy it. And sometimes it, the best thing about it is natural. beforehand, natural. we were doing this just kind of sitting around talking, right? <laughs> just guys talking. And then all of a sudden, like, hey, you know what? Let's just do that shit on the radio. And yeah, uh, people yeah. are going to love Let's it. To, to a whole new level. Yeah. yeah. G Funk step like, to this. I know oh, I'm yeah. funny, but if I put this on the radio, Everybody else is gonna hear it, <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're getting Facebook well, things saying, "Hey, that dude's not fucking funny." Right? <laughs> that funny at all? That's what the fuck man. are you thinking? <laughs> man, uh, we uh, we've announced the new uh, the new barbecue, the Bull Nasty Barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming in, dude. Like I said, yeah, man, fucking, we coming, have, guys. man. Yeah, we have fucking Justin fucking kicking ass Thank and doing you, the thing coming in. We're gonna be beer pong today. We're gonna be drinking today. We're gonna oh, be having yeah. a fucking. We're gonna be by the end of the night, man. We're gonna be a little different. Uh, we will. Well, we we will, change. You know, we mutate. We'll be a little different. You'll, we you'll actually get the real uh, Justin Party McCarty well, Justin, out of there. Justin's hands start rising. Yeah, they do. As they get higher, <laughs> as they get higher. Fingers. You know the party's coming, <laughs> man. As, as soon as they hit the top, all yeah, the dude. panties drop. It's a, exactly, dude. It's all. It's a rocking, dude. We'll be here tomorrow morning, guys.
now it's time for a reading from the book Well of Rage by Lynn Hess on Skullface Records Radio. <laughs> Chapter 2. Carly Redman needed a break from thinking about her upcoming field training at the Warner County Police Department. According to an article in the Tribune, it had taken 20 years for the first woman captain to be promoted in the department in February of this year. This news made Carly wonder how difficult it would be for her to make rank, but she pushed such dreary thoughts from her mind. Entering the park at Cathedral Square, She focused on the odors of salt and seaweed wafting down Dolphin Street, and her spirits lifted. The buzz of lighthearted conversation drifted out into the park from the doorway of Hero's Bar and Grill. Although she planned on eating lunch at a local B&B, smells of frying beef and potatoes lured her closer to her favorite comfort foods inside Hero's. She watched the sun-dry crowd inside and browsed the posted menu in the display case. The family-friendly dining atmosphere appealed to her. Carly noticed the building across the street with a faded calp sign wasn't renovated and looked abandoned until she saw someone moving around in the shadows. When she stepped off the curb to investigate, a linebacker-sized guy dressed in holy sweats plowed into her and spun her around. Blindsided, she stepped back with an expletive. Sorry, lady, he said. I'm an ox. Carly barely looked at the fella. Right, she said as she sprinted towards Calp's storefront windows. As if the bump from the encounter with the stranger had jogged a peg in a hole, she had realized every restaurant and billiard parlor on the street was packed except this joint. Walking closer, She peered through the glass storefront, spying an ancient billiard tables and some old white geezers with their backs to the door. Smoke filled the air surrounding the U-shaped bar and several wooden 1950s-style tables and chairs. Curious, she strolled by the rundown place. Curious, she strolled down the run-by place a couple of times and imagined if she opened the door and broke the no-female taboo, that the reception would be cold stares. On her last pass, a tiny guy with thick glasses behind the bar said something to the laughing men and lumbered to the entryway and shut the blinds. Being excluded or the brunt of a joke wasn't a new experience for the police recruit. Being one of three females out of a class of 30 males, but these men gave Carly the creeps. Obviously, The locals knew to stay out. She envisioned hooded robes hidden underneath the bar counter. Was this place for the men whose fathers and grandfathers wielded power in the Ku Klux Klan? Carly wondered if Harold, her downstairs neighbor, knew these men. No doubt, even in the beginning of the 21st century, old white money in Mobile still discreetly elected the proper candidate who could be bought and sold. So far, this year was like the rest for Mary Williams. Waiting for the white authorities to catch her son's killer. The teenager had vanished 26 years ago, and his body was never found. The grieving mother shoved open a window and pounded the sill. Releasing a loud moan, a stabbing pain raced across Mary's chest. God help me, she said, kissing an image of her son who had been frozen in time with the keys to his first car, suspended in the air when the shutter clicked. Let this be the year you are returned to me. Each day, not just your birthday, I will make them remember your face, Terrence. Your name, I promise. She rubbed between her pelvic bones, marking where Terrence's fetus was cradled so many years ago. Without her son... A dark void pulled at her soul. Most days, keeping the emptiness at bay took all of her strength. Breaking her reverie, Chief Cato knocked on the door calling Mary's name. He paused for a moment and then added, Miss Williams, I know you asked for a few minutes alone, but people are arriving for the noon buffet to honor Terrence's birthday. Outside Mary's house, 
The March winds whipped at Carly's curly hair and olive green t-shirt. The budded branches swished in a nearby maple as she crossed Francis Street and stepped in front of the painted lady. A Victorian mansion turned into a bed and breakfast. She had heard the B&B had the best brunch in town because Mary Williams operated the place with finesse. Since it was almost noon, she decided to venture inside, but a howling sound stopped her. Maybe it was the wind playing tricks on her, but she could have sworn she heard a cry coming from the second story. Cocking her head, she closed her eyes and concentrated. Nothing, she mumbled to herself. It's probably my imagination. As she surveyed the area, making sure she was alone. I wouldn't want the patrol guy see me poking around here because I heard a crazy sound. No harm in checking out the backyard, right, Aunt Linda? When Carly felt stressed, she spoke, though not usually out loud, to her benefactor, as if she were there for counsel, counting to eight repetitively until her mind cleared was another option that worked. Passing a willow tree, she spotted a meditation garden with an ivied archway in the backyard. To Carly, it seemed the tree stood guard over the path to the garden. A bright-colored cardinal flicked its wings and dipped its beak in a bird bath, eyeing the interloper. Just passing through, Carly said, as she noticed the small parking lot in the rear of the location was full. She theorized a rambunctious guest probably had made the earlier noise. The smell of greens and homemade bread made Carly's mouth water. On an impulse, she knocked on the back door and entered a hallway of the kitchen. A stunning black woman seemed to be giving last-minute instructions to a man wearing a chef's hat. She looked up at Carly and smiled. Mary Williams, the owner of the Painted Lady, asked Carly if she had a reservation. No, I'm afraid I don't, but I've heard your brunch is terrific. Mary nodded and her blue silk blouse shimmered against her mahogany skin. Of course, please stay, Miss Carly Redman. Mary welcomed Carly and escorted her towards the main dining room, where the background chatter of the guests beckoned. Carly estimated Mary to be six feet without her heels, being five feet and nine inches. Carly appreciated statuesque women. When her hostess started to excuse herself, Carly stopped her. By the way, did you hear a sound like a scream ten minutes ago? Mary's eyes narrowed, measuring her guest. No, all is well. Fingering her pearl necklace, she smiled. You know, Chef Cato can handle the finishing touches without me. Let's go sit down. She ushered Carly into the dining room, where a crystal chandelier caught the afternoon light like a prism. We should join the others, Mary said, but Carly didn't move. She admired the white lace tablecloths and vases of pink roses decorating each of the tables. Mary continued, You can see a few house guests and locals have dropped by for our gourmet brunch. They're a hungry, impatient bunch. She touched Carly's shoulder. Would you like a tour of the inn after we eat? Thank you. I'd like that. Carly counted about 20 people milling around the tables as Mary nodded a hello to a patron across the room. As if on cue, the wiry man dressed in a chef's hat materialized and seated Mary. She thanked him and took her place at the head of the table. While a waiter began serving, the chef announced the menu. Asparagus, baked pears, and chilled poached grouper with white wine. The room was filled with a diverse mixture of adults and children, dressed as if attending an international conference for the artistic and chic. One woman wore a red and gold sari, and another couple wore matching African prints of royal blue and mustard yellow. I'm not dressed appropriately, Carly said. 
Nonsense, Mary insisted. All of this is for you and my other guests. She swept her hands towards the deep velvet curtains and the glistening purple glassware. I want people to be comfortable. Come. Carly walked toward the fireplace and caught sight of the Steinway near the window. Do you play? Carly asked her hostess. Yes, a little. My mother plays, Carly said, turning. Whoa, is the fireplace cast iron? Interlacing her fingers, Mary said, Yes, yes, I think the black against the white tile inserts ground the room. Carly couldn't help gushing. I can't get over how elegant your home is. Mary flashed a smile over her shoulder at Carly. She is a beautiful old lady. That's an understatement. Mary swept the top of the chair. Dear, sit down and tell me about yourself. By the way, Madeline Teasler, a board member of the ACLU, is to your left. And George Polk, the man across from you, is an aging charmer with questionable skills. Beware. Everyone laughed and greeted Carly. She told Mary and the other guests about moving from Charleston to Mobile and described the mishaps of furnishing her loft. And then the conversation between Mary and Carly became more intimate. Monopolizing her hostess, Carly mentioned the police academy and every pent-up emotion about the experience came pouring out. Mary listened without interruption, and Carly ended with a war story about the boxing matches held the last day of the academy, dubbed Fight Day by the instructors. In the final practical exercise, Sergeant Dillon, or testosterone man as I called him, had his last chance to try and wash me out. I was determined to win. The sergeant disliked me. I'm guessing because I scored the highest academically. The Sarge whispered last-minute advice to my male sparring partner, and then during the fight, my challenger used an unauthorized chokehold on me. I knew blood restriction to the brain would make me pass out. The incident was meant to embarrass me, scare me, but my survival instinct kicked in. With blind luck, I landed a backward palm jab that connected with the other recruit's nose, stunned him, and he gave me time to flip and pin him to the mat. The match was called, but I think the adrenaline got to my opponent. He grabbed at my legs as I stepped away. I landed on top of an ankle. Carly pushed her unruly hair away from her forehead as she said, Everything is fair in love and the macho playing field, Mrs. Bocoop. As my Aunt Linda would say, I flattened that guy. It cost me a bruised ankle and a hand, but so what? I see you're very brave. It's better that you don't fully understand what you're up against, living in Mobile. The isms of life here require patience and strength. For an instant, sadness morphed Mary's ageless face into a tired woman in her 60s. Please excuse my tendency for philosophic ramblings. She cupped Carly's elbow and said, Not a matter for today, Artemis. We'll talk later while touring the mansion. Have another glass of wine, my young warrior. Officer J.C. Gray ducked into the central precinct men's room, wondering what was happening. The captain had jumped the chain of command and called him into the precinct. It meant big trouble or a big favor. As he came out of the restroom, J.C. passed a beat officer talking on the telephone. He pointed at Gray, mimicked a hangman's noose, and stuck his tongue out the side of his mouth. The administration officer poked his head out of the break room and nodded towards the carpeted partitions. Gray, you're wanted in the captain's office. What gives, Joel? Where are my sergeant and lieutenant and the frickin' chain of command procedure? The admin officer pushed his glasses up on his nose and shrugged. As a veteran officer with more years of service than Joel, 
J.C. said, okay, never mind, dickhead, I'm going. While trying to end a conversation on the phone with an irate citizen, Captain Forrester motioned J.C. inside the cubicle that substituted for an office. The captain responded to the citizen on the phone. Yes, ma'am, I assure you the officers do patrol your neighborhood in Spring Hill, but he listened, shaking his head before interjecting. I've been trying to explain you've called the wrong precinct. I'll contact the captain in the precinct covering your neighborhood and have him call you. Yes, today. He dropped the phone in the cradle. She hung up on me. Can you believe the bullshit, Gray? No, sir. Looking up at J.C., the captain said, Lady told me she pays my salary with her taxes, yada, yada. The 22-year-old veteran of the department stood at parade rest with his uniform and face respectively worn and weary. He had heard it all. There was no need to reply. Officer Gray, said Forrester, at his starched sleeve patch crackled, stretching across his bicep. We, the Major and I, have been reviewing your precinct file this morning. It's impressive. Five commendations in the last three months. Thank you, sir. J.C. noticed he wasn't asked to sit down. He shifted the gun belt, cutting into his ribs, and refused to give in to the urge to brush off the front of his faded shirt. I wanted to recommend you for a field training officer position. We need good FTOs. There it was. The favor, coupled with a little name dropping. Hell, both the Major and Forrester knew J.C. didn't want a so-called promotion to FTO. We need a seasoned veteran to train a specific recruit. This will require someone with discretion because this could be a sensitive situation. As you know, there's no pay increase for field training officers. But the Detective Division, (laughs) the Criminal Investigation Division supervisors, Consider these types of voluntary assignments when they're reviewing applications. I would approve any request for transfer that came my way. J.C. forced back a smile, knowing the captain was blowing smoke up his stuck-in-patrol ass. He had pissed off the wrong precinct commander as a rookie, and his opportunities to go into the CID had been and were a long-gone ambition but he kept his face blank. They both knew he had no choice. Sir, I understand the new academy class is coming out in a few days. Who do you want me to train? A female recruit, Forrester said, opening a file. Her name's Carly Redman. J.C. shifted his feet to a wider stance and waited while Forrester killed time moving a paperweight to the corner of his desk. She's smart, this Redman, Forrester said has a degree from Duke. The problem? She gave Sergeant Dillon hell. The captain frowned and looked at the paper on his desk. No street experience. No military or family in law enforcement. Not a good beginning. The captain swept his thick comb-over back into place. J.C. thought the hairdo made the captain resemble a Yorkie dog with a crooked crown. Forrester continued. I just hope she doesn't get herself or a fellow officer hurt before she understands what's necessary out there. Can you work with me on this? J.C. held Forrester's gaze for a moment before he answered. Sir, I'm not thrilled about the idea of training a woman, let alone one who is considered a problem, but I'll do my best. Forrester smiled. Hell, I knew you were a team player. We'll take care of you somewhere down the line. The captain swiveled in his chair towards his computer, giving J.C. the impression he was dismissed. He started to leave, but the captain continued. Of course, should the recruit fail to measure up to police officer standard training, we would be forced to terminate her. J.C. almost laughed at Forrester's habit of qualifying police acronyms, but caught himself. The veteran nodded. Yes, sir. You'll need documentation for post. I understand. But before I go, level with me. What aren't you saying? 
She doesn't understand there's no I in the word team. Just a couple of years as a campus cop. Can you believe that? She's a liver for sure. The captain's eyes darted sideways at his full inbox. J.C. decided to venture asking one more question. Sir, is she a dyke? No, don't think so, but it would be less trouble if she was. Just watch her back. I wouldn't trust her in a tight corner. The captain preened his mustache before closing the file. We'll see if her high-class education helps her when some puke is kicking her brains out. J.C. exited the captain's cubicle with his mind racing. If the brass in the hierarchy were right, J.C. would have to deal with a woman nobody liked. And, of course, his wife, Noreen, would pitch a fit about a woman partner riding 12 hours a night in his patrol car. God, he hoped Redmond was dirt ugly. He already hated her guts. He popped his neck trying to work out the kinks and thought about his brother. Taking out his cell phone, J.C. flipped it open and then shut it as he unlocked the Crown Vic, stepped in, and cleared his computer. His brother Derek was busy these days. Thank you for listening to Skullface Records Radio. This has been a reading from the book Well of Rage by Lynn Hess. Be sure to continue to tune in for more chapters to find out what lies beneath the Well of Rage on Skullface Records Radio. Mm-hmm.